Now as a third potential model problem, I will explain to you support vector machines. So uh, the problem is given a um, lot of data, how can you learn and generalize from the data. So a very um, simple example here is class classification. And here we are also talking about linear classification because uh, we are very simple here. So uh, the setting is as follows. We have points and uh, these points are given in a, uh, points and label pairs actually. And in our setting, because I only have a two-dimensional um, plane to work with, our points live in the um, in the in R two here. Uh, this can obviously be a higher dimensional space, and the labels are plus or minus. So, what does how, how could this potentially look like? Um, let's draw our plane here. Okay. And then let's say that we have a lot of uh, points with a plus one label. And then on the other hand, we have some labels with uh, uh, some points with a minus one label. Like this. And the goal is that we want to find some linear separation of these points so that we can say whenever we are in this half of, uh, of, of the plane R2, then our point will probably have the label plus one. And whenever we are in this half of the plane, then our point will probably be, will have label minus one. Okay, so um, the problem is to find this, find an equation for this plane. For this, yeah, separating um, and in this case, it is a line because the plane is the space and we, we want to separate this. Uh, we want to find a separating line here. Um, by the way, this works equally well for, for higher dimensional spaces. But uh, as usual, um, when it comes to di di dimensionality, uh, the only limit is your imagination. So um, how, can we, how can we formulate this? And uh, usually for, um, for a plane, the, uh, oh, for, a, for this line, um, uh, this, is a, uh, this is characterized by a vector W, which is the normal vector to the plane. Um, also W stands for weight vector and uh, a bias. So, uh, the the plane is given by an equation. Uh, oops, I am not sure if you see the colors in the video. Um, so here you have W X, and I guess I chose W X plus B. Yeah. And for the plane, this is equal to zero. So if we are on uh, for for this line, this is equal to zero. So if we are on the line, then we we are equal to zero. Here we have w x plus b greater than zero, and here we have um, that's not the right color. Um, here we have w x less than zero. 
Okay. So, um, let's formulate uh, our optimization problem from this setting. So, given um, pairs, and I, I name them x i and y i with x i, let's say, in R n, and y i should be uh, plus or minus one. Um, so the idea with support vector machines is not only to find an equation for some separating line or separating hyperplane in, in general for R n, but instead you want to find uh, the the hyperplane which has the most margin uh, to both sides. So find the separating hyperplane so in hyperplane in a two-dimensional space as a one-dimensional line therefore my confusion and find the separating hyperplane um, which has most margin to both sides. Then you classify your uh, the the unknown uh, some unknown uh, samples which uh, you want to generalize which, which you want to, your model to generalize to. Uh, by the sign of this expression uh, in a product of w and x. So you can probably write w transpose x. That's That might be easier to understand. w transpose x plus b. And the sign of this, if it's positive, then you have a plus sign of the predicted label. If it's negative, then you have a minus sign at the predicted label. And the label could stand for very different things. For example, if this Rn con is a space of images, then the label could um, tell you uh, if the if the image shows a dog or a cat or something else. Uh, the, there are various interpretations. Okay, let's um, uh, let's formulate this. So the idea is that we want to minimize something. Uh, and let's first um, define, let's first tell, tell you what we want to minimize. So we have the weight vector w, and in our case this is in Rn. And we have a bias uh, which determines uh, wh how, how far we shift the hyperplane, and the bias is a real number uh, by this term. Um, and what we want to ensure is that all the points are on the uh, right side. So um, how do we do this? So here we see um, whenever we multiply w with xi one of these points and add the bias, then uh, we want to at least have the right, um, the right sign of this expression. So if, if you have label plus one, then this should be positive. And if you have a label minus one, then this should be negative. So whenever you multiply this expression with yi, Okay, y is either plus or minus one. Then, if if this is positive, and uh, then y i should be positive, and the product should be positive. On the other hand, if this expression is uh, negative and the label is negative, then this uh, then the product is positive. So this should always be a positive number, and um, it should actually have a, a margin. And the margin we can we can now since we have not set any specific uh, any we have not specified what the vector w should be we can just set the margin to one and this should be should hold for all i and yeah I have not specified the number of pairs um, so for all 
pairs x i and w uh, x i and y i uh, this thing should hold. And now, what do we minimize? Well, this margin here is is heavily dependent on this on the length of the w vector. So if we if we double the w vector, uh, then uh, this thing uh, this this whole expression should also get twice this value. So if we choose, if we scale the vector w large enough, then we will eventually we will eventually go over this uh, one. And our goal is to not uh, scale this vector uh, too much. So actually, we want to minimize the scaling of this vector w. And usually, this formulation is um, is made with squaring this because then this whole thing here gets uh, to be differentiable and this is the classical support vector machine problem and right now if you if you're going into literature of machine learning then you see you will probably never see uh, this problem but um, why have I chosen this um, the first thing is this is a convex problem And it's potentially large scale. Potentially large scale means if you have a large number of um, of data, a large amount of data here, then you have a lot of constraints here. And if the if your if your um, space of samples is large enough, then you also get to ha have a large number of variables. So W might be large. So uh, you have a large number of constraints. Uh, this is usually, uh, or, yeah, I can't, I can't say this. This is uh, often the determin determining factor for the um, for 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 the problem being large scale. And then you have this uh, this uh, weight ve vector, which can also be large if if it's for if you have, for example, images or so. Um, usually, the modern approach um, to um, this thing to classification. So this is what everyone is doing now. Would be um, deep learning. Deep learning has the disadvantage here that you don't have a, a very easy explanation, a very easy geometric visualization. And it has another drawback. It is not usually the resulting optimization problems. It's still optimization, but they are not convex. So um, they technically don't fall into, into our lecture here. But um, oftentimes, uh, these non-convex problems are solved with the same algorithms as we do with our convex problems. So you can um, also use, for example, uh, some kind of subgradient method or gradient method um, or to solve these non-convex problems. The drawback being that you don't have uh, these strong convergence guarantees, which we show. But I mean, you can be lucky and they still converge. Um, and they can still converge um, quite fast. So um, this is a very uh, brief overview where um, convex optimization, large-scale convex optimization, comes in into, um, into machine learning. Um, uh, we see that deep learning technically does not lead to convex problems. Um, but you also see here a uh, large amount of data lead to large-scale problems.